Hi everyone, it's Elizabeth from Elpis Astrology at elpisastrology.com. So I thought I would do a short video um, for the first upcoming eclipse that we have in the new eclipse season in 2024. And just discuss a little bit about it in advance of it happening. So this is going to be a full moon eclipse that I'm sp speaking about. And it is in Pisces at 25 degrees of Pisces. It occurs on the 17th of September, uh, 2024 at 7.33 p.m. And that's Pacific Daylight Time. So for other folks, um, it, it may um, occur at, at a slightly different time during the day, right? Depending where you're living in the world. So why I wanted to do this was because of this full moon eclipse in Pisces predicates the actual changing of the transiting north nodes that are currently in Aries that'll be going into Pisces mid-January 2025 and really highlight some of the areas that may be brought up in September around this full moon eclipse that's actually going to follow us for approximately 18 months when the north nodes, the transiting north nodes themselves, go into Pisces uh, for 18 months or so, starting mid-January 2025. All right, so <clears throat> I look back to see at this degree point, um, I, I didn't go back, you know, decades and decades and decades, but I did go back to look at when was the last time we had something like an eclipse like this happen? So I did turn up that we did have a full moon eclipse in the opposite sign at 24 degrees of Virgo. And so at that eclipse, which occurred in March, 2026, we would have had a switch, right? We would have the moon in Virgo, but then the sun at 24 degrees uh, of Pisces. So that's where the, I guess, comparison is. Um, so there'd be a slightly different emphasis on things here, but we would still have the Pisces activated, but it'd be by the sun and not the moon at that full moon. And I saw the biggest thing that actually was up in March 20, 2006 uh, was Twitter, um, you know, now called X, uh, was started at this time. So Maybe we're going to have something happen in that area uh, of note um, that'll be highlighted as well, but just in a slightly different way, right? So we're talking about September 17th, 2024, 7.33 p.m., and that's Pacific Daylight Time. And it will be at 25 degrees of Pisces and 40 minutes. Of note, it will be closely conjunct to Neptune. Um, which, of course, is the ruler of Pisces. So right now, we still have transiting Neptune in Pisces. So what does that put on this? Well, at its highest, it can bring a big spotlight to things like, you know, dance, music, uh, creating music, um, and, and to some extent, art as well. Uh, great inspiration um, is all sort of the realm of Pisces and Neptune. Um, but it can also put a spotlight on things like mental illness. Um, and it follows the institutions like hospitals um, involved here as well. We're talking about the waters, right? Neptune rules the waters as well. So anything to do with our waters could come to light at this time as well. And of course, deception. Deception and confusion, even though there can be huge inspiration, the energies of Pisces and Neptune are very subtle. And to process them is not such an easy task sometimes. And so I would say there's also this element that could be in at this time, that confusion and deception. And now we are talking about September 2024, right? As a month where this actual eclipse is going to take place. And the other thing that we've got happening, uh, literally uh, in the USA, there's quite a few things actually happening in the whole world of politics. 
Um, it's a big election related month. We have primaries in Massachusetts, Delaware, New Hampshire, and Rhode Island. And we also have a, a scheduled, at least at this time, so I'm making this video towards the end of June, 2024. We have a scheduled presidential and vice president uh, debate that's scheduled for September 2. Um, as I mentioned, we have the moon that will be conjunct Neptune. This brings in, uh, like I said, you know, potentially great inspiration, um, but it can also bring in, um, I would say, a lot of deception and confusion equally. The sun will be conjunct uh, Mercury uh, in Virgo, and of course the ruler of Virgo is Mercury. So this could bring in some important facts to light, maybe some facts that hitherto unknown facts and information will be revealed that take on great significance. And I think that great significance is gonna be at the final eclipse that will happen in 2024. It'll be in Libra, sign of ruling the law, uh, on the 2nd of October. I will make um, a video about that too, but I just wanted to bring in the fact that this September full moon eclipse in Pisces will somehow feature and move into the whole effects of the, uh, in terms of events of the 2nd of October eclipse that happens in Libra. Just as a note, I did do a whole video on the transiting north nodes going into Pisces. And of course the south nodes will be in the opposite sign, which is Virgo. I'll leave that link below. So I go into lots of details about history uh, of when the north nodes were in Pisces, events that happened, um, your ascendants, sun signs, all that type of thing uh, is in this larger video that I did bigger video that I did uh, with the link below. So you might want to actually listen or watch that as well once you've listened to this or vice versa. Your choice. So we have at this time, at this eclipse, the Mercury uh, is approaching the Sun. Now it won't be conjunct the Sun um, until we get to October at that eclipse uh, that's going to be happening in Libra. And so the actual conjunction will be between the Sun and Mercury, but it'll be in Libra at that time. So we're talking, that's how the whole, how it follows the eclipse that's going to happen in September, follows in some way to important information and facts also being released around that eclipse at the beginning of October. The actual conjunction of uh, Mercury and the Sun in Libra will happen on the 1st of October, or the eclipse happens on the 2nd. All right, so other things that we have happening is um, certainly Venus will be in Libra. So this actually really does put another emphasis on the law. It also speaks to diplomatic relations potentially, um, and keeping things balanced, right? It could also put literally an effect on Venus women, and then Libra the law, so these two may also be going together, some, some laws regarding women, and we know there's a number out there right now, but these could come up um, as a real focus at this uh, full moon eclipse in Pisces. We have Mars at seven degrees of Cancer squaring the north nodes, uh, and of course, uh, that are still at this eclipse, the north nodes, the transiting north nodes will still be in Aries and the south nodes in Libra even though the eclipse is in uh, Pisces. And so this is putting some challenges with regards to um, actions taken regarding um, the mother, motherhood, uh, the family, that type of thing, right? So that Mars square is action and it's in Cancer, which is a very mothering sign. And it's also our home land. So with the square here to the north nodes, it says to me that there may be some real challenges regarding that area with regards to our destiny, right? With regards to us wanting to, to dictate our destiny. Remember at this time, the north nodes are in Aries where we want to do what we want to do. We wanna lead 
um, our own lives, right? And take our own initiatives with regards to um, the whole cancer part of it here where Mars is, um, motherhood, uh, anything to do with being a mother and the family, right? But also our homeland too. So there may be something up regarding that as well. Nicely though, uh, we have this continuing sextile between Neptune and Pluto, which puts a nicer energy out there, right? It says we have opportunities here to work together, but working together has to be from a really high level, an inspired level to do the best we can uh, with the power that we have, right? So, so that's the premise, the stage that's set. It's how can we do that, right? Certainly Pisces uh, rules things like mental illness as well. It also speaks to, you know, charity, uh, charitable institutions, um, compassion, great compassion. And so with this eclipse, whatever kind of comes up for you around this eclipse, now typically we say that there should be something around, say, 25 degrees of Pisces or the opposite sign, Virgo, to have any really effect for you, because sometimes these things can pass by. But as I mentioned earlier, this starts off in many ways or predicates the actual ingress of the North Nodes going in Pisces in mid-January uh, 2025. So watch what happens, I guess, in September, just the whole month, because that may feature more um, earnestly once we actually get the North Nodes going into Pisces for 18 months, right? And having uh, eclipses in Pisces as well as uh, Virgo. Yeah, I mean, I was looking at the various eclipses that will be happening in Pisces and Virgo, and a lot of them are full moons. So there's a lot of culminating energy here with regards to uh, anything to do with uh, Pisces as well as Virgo, right? But the idea is we're pointing towards um, our collective destiny with the North Nodes in Pisces, right? So we're really looking at inspirational things here. And I would say this is inspirational things to do with mental illness of any sort. Um, our water, clean water type of in information here. Um, and of providing inspiration and compassion to others, not fogginess and deception, right? So these kind of are juxtaposed during this time. And it starts off here in September 2024. So I just wanted to bring an attention or your attention to that um, as just a focus to see, you know, what does happen then, because that'll carry on whatever those influences are um, starting mid-January for 18 months, right? And certainly if you've got your own north nodes in Pisces, this will be an important time for you, almost like a recalibration of your destiny path, getting you right back on that path again where favorable things come in for you, favorable people, events, situations, right? Again, you can check out my video for a lot more detail on that below. So let's just go into um, the ascendants and or sun signs, whichever appeal to you or resonate with you. And let's look at what house this is going to fall in uh, for you. So we'll start off with you, Pisces, because that's where this full moon is. So for you, Pisces, You've got the full moon itself in your first house, but then we know that the sun is in your opposite sign, right? Virgo, and that's your seventh house. So this brings up some kind of dynamic with regards to you and a partner, whether it's a business partner, a marriage partner. It can also be clients as well, um, but this puts a big focus on you where something uh, will come to light, so you get a big spotlight shine. Something may end, something may wrap up, something may culminate in your life. But whatever it is, it's going to carry on once the North Nodes officially go in to your sign, right, for 18 months starting mid-January 2025. It could be, Pisces, that... Um, there's a whole new start for you, right? Where you ending something provides you with a platform to move forward with something else. 
And I mean, Pisces are very giving uh, people. It could be something as simple as a many Pisces realize they're just giving too much and they need to stop the compassion and start turning that around and giving compassion to themselves, right? So that's, a, that's a big lesson to learn. There's nothing wrong with being compassionate, but not at the detriment of yourself, right? Still, other Pisces may get involved much more in the metaphysical world. And this would cover all aspects from shamanism to astrology, for instance. Um, healing of any sorts may come, uh, may be highlighted a lot more for Pisces. I mean, even things like dance um, and music of any sort are very Piscean uh, areas of life. So all these could be activated uh, with regards to a big spotlight being um, highlighted for you. I mean, it could be that you, some Pisces, finish off some beautiful piece of music or put the final touches to some kind of dance movement as well. Take care, Pisces. So Aries, um, this full moon eclipse in Pisces takes place in your 12th house. So there's a wrap up of some sort a potential ending, a big spotlight shone on your 12th house. And it could be as something as simple as you need to take a rest. Maybe you need to go to some place like an ashram or a health spa of some sort to rejuvenate your body more. I mean, Pisces is very much a, a feeling sign. Um, it's a very psychic, uh, very intuitive, um, and maybe you've just been processing too much st stuff and your mind and body needs to take a rest from it all. Yeah, it could be something like that. The 12th house also could be, uh, with Pisces involved here, for some Aries to start percolating some great um, potential music or, or dance of some sort. Right? It can be sculpture too. Um, so there could be a lot of this going on behind the scenes. The 12th house is very much behind the scenes. So you could be doing something like this where you can't bring it quite out into the open, but you can continue to work on it and maybe bring to a conclusion of some sort um, with regards to whatever it is that you're working on behind the scenes. Um, it could also be like for some areas, like say you've been um, in some kind of hospital setting to, to heal. Uh, this could mark like a big, uh, a big time where you say you can finish off whatever therapy, maybe it's some kind of therapy that you have to go into the hospital for and that's finished off for you, right? Um, it could just have you um, having to work behind the scenes in a way that is um, uh, providing some compassionate, um, type of service of some sort. Pisces is very service oriented, just like, um, you know, Virgo can be too. So I would say that, yeah, for Aries, it really is working behind the scenes in these areas, um, but that you complete something at the same time. Um, for others, it could be, you know, maybe you're putting some, a different take within some kind of organization um, where everything is being done by you behind the scenes. It's not ready to launch yet, but you kind of are wrapping up something, maybe reorganizing um, some structure within some institutions like a hospital, for instance. Take care, Aries. So for Taurus, Pisces sextiles your sign, so these are opportunities coming your way involving the 11th house. So some Taurians are gonna get an opportunity to make new friendships. Friendships that are, are more compassionate um, and maybe even provide some kind of service for you that is of great use to you, right? Now that 11th house can also represent our hopes, dreams and wishes. So there may be some Taurians that can actually see at this eclipse an opportunity to make a dream come true. But as I mentioned, you know, something really has to be around that 25 degrees of Pisces to have a real effect 
as I said, sometimes these go by, or there's just a minor thing that actually happens. Um, but it can also give you opportunities to, I would say, maybe wrap up some association with groups that maybe are requiring too much service from you and join other groups that give you a more balanced uh, lifestyle of some sort, right? Now we will have the sun uh, at this eclipse that's gonna be in Virgo and that'll be activating your fifth house. So this may be, um, it may be as a result of you starting maybe some initiative of some sort uh, with regards to a creative project, children may be involved, maybe even a new love will be involved, um, that somehow provides um, a new opportunity for you to work within the auspices of, I would say, um, groups that you belong to and or friends. Whatever way you cut it, this eclipse is going to be highlighting opportunities through friendships, through the groups that you belong to. But those opportunities may be that you let go of some friendships or let go of some groups and entertain the idea of maybe joining others that are more supportive for you. But it is a sextile to you. And um, so it's opportunities coming your way, whether you want to take them or not, um, that are going to set you up in some way, you know, for 18 months starting mid-January of next year. All right. Take care, Taurus. So Gemini. This full moon eclipse in Pisces squares you and your 10th house. So this says to me that there may be some challenges with regards to your career, your reputation, your social standing. Um, and it could play out as something like, with Pisces especially, you're just giving too much. And, you know, always being the person that picks up the pieces. Um, and that could equate in you working too hard, um, especially with regards to compassionate type things or service type things. Um, and this is just a big spotlight put on that. And you say you've got to change something up here with regards to your career. Uh, for other Geminis, this may be a change time in your career where you decide in September you want to shift your career now to work more in compassionate-like setting, uh, service-oriented setting. And this eclipse uh, brings something in for you to help you do that. Now, it's gonna involve some work on your part because it's a square, but it doesn't mean it won't happen. Um, I suspect a lot of Geminis are gonna be changing up their career, that those 18 months starting mid-January, when the nodes go into Pisces sets up 18 months of you literally putting a new career together for yourself. And this is just the springboard of it, uh, where something clicks, something happens uh, that gives you clearer understanding. I mean, it can also, I mean, Pisces, like I said, involves, uh, it does involve film as well, uh, motion pictures type thing, literal photographs, uh, dance and music. So maybe this is an area some Geminis want to get into, and you just have to put some effort starting here in September to make something new in your life with regards to a career in one of these areas. Take care, Gemini. So Cancer, um, this full moon eclipse in Pisces is in a fellow water sign. So that means it forms a trine, a very favorable trine with you and your ninth house. Some cancers are just going to be publishing um, or get a chance to publish something. And this is a kickoff for you starting maybe something completely new in your life, um, where maybe publishing becomes part of your life for the 18 months that um, we're going to have the North Nodes in Pisces starting mid-January. But this September eclipse gives you the information and certainly trines are just so super positive. The energy is going to be working with you, you know, that's for sure. Like the force is with you, Cancer. Um, for other people, it might be you get an opportunity to wrap up some travel of some sort. If you have been, say, living in a foreign land, here you get the opportunity to may go back, maybe to go back home. Concluding maybe some um, 
advanced degree could be in your sights in September as well. Or even just concluding all the paperwork that you have to put in to start an advanced degree may be wrapped up in September too. If you're involved in any kind of legal cases, this is the closing of the book, right? In a very, very favorable way. It's almost like, you know, um, all the hard work maybe that you've been doing in some kind of legal case is seen now as a wrap up that you can actually end something in that area. Now the sun is gonna be in your third house cancer. So it will also be um, stimulating that area as well. So let's go back to the whole, uh, you traveling internationally or living internationally, and then the third house, which is more travel locally. You may be given an opportunity to actually travel more locally and stay close to home as opposed to being overseas. So that is something simple. Um, something you get a chance to publish also can initiate that third house where you say you could do even more writing, right? That can be activated here too. Take care, Cancer. All right, Leo. So Leo, this um, eclipse in Pisces lands in your eighth house. And so there's going to be some wrap up here with regards to shared resources, um, investments that you have. Maybe there's going to be some uh, Leos that decide to retire and you want to access those investments now, those 401ks, those pensions at this eclipse. It kicks off the energy of that. Maybe you don't retire right in September, but you start that process of ha making it happen, right? Um, it can also represent um, you deciding uh, to stop psychological therapy of some sort. Um, that may be up for some uh, Leos as well. The eighth house is also inheritances. And so this could be a wrap up for some Leos with regards to that. For others, it may be other people's money uh, in terms of maybe you get the loan that you applied for and you've been waiting to hear about. You f they finally come to you and say, we've made a decision here. Um, but it can also have you wrapping up, say, your mortgages or your mortgage rather, um, and or paying off a credit card. That would be a good way to use that full moon eclipse for sure. Take care, Leo. So for Virgo, um, this happens in your seventh house. So Virgo uh, forms an opposition with uh, Pisces. And so you've got the sun in your first house, right? And you've got the moon um, that's in the seventh house. So this brings into focus in some way a dynamic between your marriage partner and or business partner and clients. And it brings some kind of concluding energy here for you, Virgo. Um, there may be some folks um, that are ending a business partnership at this time, September time period, you decide that. And it might be a natural ending of some sort where all parties agree we need to go our own way. Or it could be um, that September represents a time for some uh, Virgos that may end a relationship, a serious relationship like a marriage. That could be up as well. Clients, yeah. You may have to deal with clients here, uh, maybe more clients, you know, you're having to do a lot more work uh, with clients uh, than you expected. Yeah, seventh house is any other person. So it just could have you dealing with um, a, a lot of people that require um, service and or uh, compassion, right? These are the areas that Pisces um, kind of views. I mean, it can also have you dealing with people who um, may uh, be handicapped with regards to uh, some mental issue of some sort as well. That might be up for some Virgos where you have to pay greater attention to the information and figure out 
what's important here. Yeah. But you're going to have um, an eclipse that happens in March next year, 2025, Virgo, that will also be a full moon at 24 degrees, 24, 25 degrees um, in your sign. Um, so in many ways, Pisces and Virgo are very much affected by all the eclipses that are going to be coming up, starting up with this one in September, once the North Nodes officially go in to Pisces mid-January 2025. Take care, Virgo. So Libra, um, this eclipse falls in your sixth house. Uh, straight off, I'm thinking there's going to be a lot of Libras just changing their jobs. Either you decide to, you don't want to do this job anymore, and you get out of the company that you're in, um, or you take on a new role in the company, and that new role may involve service of some sort, as well as compassionate charity type things, right? It can also emphasize your health here as well. And so it concludes, right, or shines a light on some aspect of your health. Maybe this is you, or you're going to say, okay, I've had enough here. I want to take care of my physical health, my nutritional needs, my mental health. Um, for some Librans, maybe you haven't been paying attention to almost like that spiritual side of your life. Um, and that may equate in you working too hard, right? And, you know, providing too much service to too many people. Uh, that you need to reconsider how you're doing your day to day. I mean, it could also be, um, you know, this is also the time period where some um, Librans may decide they want to retire and they don't want to do the, the job that they want to do now is maybe, you know, seeking out the metaphysical world and the spiritual world and not doing our typical, say, corporate job. And these decisions uh, could start manifesting or come to light in September at this eclipse for some Librans, right? And still others, if you have had bad health, I mean, this concluding energy uh, could just be bringing to light that you don't need to go to the hospital anymore. You don't need to um, access medical personnel for whatever condition you have. You can see the end of that, right? This is an ending energy, culminating energy. Take care, Libra. For Scorpio, this forms a trine with you and involves your fifth house. And so there may be some concluding energy of some sort with regards to maybe a creative project. And I'm thinking a creative project to do with music, dance, uh, perhaps even sculpture, maybe something to do with uh, photographs or movies, that type of thing as well. Those are all under the auspices of Pisces. Um, or even like the mystical side of life, right? The metaphysical side of life. The fifth house is also, you know, um, starting uh, your own business. So there may be some Scorpios that decide to actually um, start their own business, to, to leave behind whatever they're doing, and to now focus more on um, the compassionate side of and spiritual side of um, their own business, as opposed to working for the corporate world. Um, that fifth house is also the house of new love and true love. So, you know, and we think about Venus when we talk about love mostly, right? Um, but Neptune that rules Pisces is often viewed as the higher octave of Venus. And because we're talking about true love potentially involving this fifth house, there could be some next stage uh, with some kind of new true love in your life that manifests around this time in a very favorable way for you, Scorpio. Children could also be in the mix favorably here for you. Um, maybe some of the compassion and service that you've given to a child um, somehow concludes in a positive way for you. All right, take care, Scorpio. So Sagittarius, um, this forms a square with you and involves the fourth house. And so 
we're looking here at some big illumination of some sort with regards to your family, your literal home that you live in, perhaps your mother as well. Uh, it doesn't mean it's going to be all negative, um, but it does kick off something here with regards to challenges in these areas where you may have to work together with other people in these areas to overcome uh, maybe some differences of opinions um, or just challenges, generally speaking, right? Um, that sun is going to be in your 10th house. And so there's some relationship with regards to this challenge and your career. So for some Sagittarians, it might mean that you have an opportunity to do this job. Um, maybe it involves um, collecting information of some sort, um, writing of some sort but that it challenges the home that you're in or the family that you're with uh, negatively because maybe you've got to move to do this job, right? Whatever way you cut it, Sagittarius, um, whatever happens in September is going to follow you starting mid-January uh, for about 18 months when we have the transiting north nodes in Pisces. And so both these areas are going to be highlighted by eclipses, right? your home as well as your career. It doesn't mean it's going to be negative for you. It just means that maybe you've got to work harder in both these areas, um, uh, overcome some challenges that you weren't anticipating. Um, and maybe, maybe it's you creating a whole new home and a whole new career, and it just involves you putting effort into it. It doesn't mean it won't be created, right? I mean, Pisces is very inspirational. Um, it could involve you um, maybe taking or aiming towards a new career in any of those areas I mentioned. Uh, and this could be even in hospitals. Pisces very much hospital-oriented, um, service-oriented, charities, um, music, dance, um, photography of any sort, um, or films. It rules that as well, too, right? So these may all be up for you in terms of a career. Um, and you need to somehow organize the family and home situation. And it's not so straightforward. You know, try to involve other people in a positive way to make decisions with regards to, you know, your home life here and the home you're living in. Um, and look at it as a win-win situation, if at all possible. Take care, Sagittarius. So Capricorn, this um, full moon eclipse in Pisces forms a sextile with you and involves your third house. And so straight off, this could be opportunities for you to wrap up a writing project, opportunities for you to conclude some maybe communications that you've been having ongoing. Um, it also kind of highlights, it's a sextile. So this is, is a positive influence on you, Capricorn. So these are just opportunities. Do you want this or do you not want it, right? It doesn't mean you have to take it. It's also travel. So there may be some uh, Capricorns that are offered the opportunity to do some just short distance travel, maybe around their city or their state um, that may or may not appeal to you. And it could be to do with education of some sort here. But as I said, there's also writing. So there could be an opportunity for you to wrap up some. Maybe you've had some kind of writing project that's just, you know, been laying around for years. And you finally finish it off. And you say, I know how I want to finish this. Finish it off. And you potentially get it published. Because the sun is going to be in the ninth house of this eclipse, and that is the house of publishing, long-distance travel, foreign people, the law, all that sort of thing. Um, so the initial kickoff of these eclipses uh, in Pisces and Virgo is going to start in Pisces, right? Where the north nodes will be mid-January 2025 for 18 months. So see what comes up for you, Capricorn. But know that that positive influence of opportunities are going to continue with you as you um, go through these eclipses in both your third house and your ninth house, right? Yeah, I mean, you also could have opportunities here 
um, to communicate more with your siblings or your neighbors for that matter. That, that also rules um, that third house. Um, the third house is also, you know, uh, sales and commerce. So there may be some Capricorns that um, get an opportunity to tie something up maybe with a ongoing um, maybe business in the sales area or, or commerce area. And you tie up the contract, you sign it off, starting on this eclipse, and this kicks off a whole new thing for you. Take care, Capricorn. So Aquarius, this falls in your second house. So this suggests that a couple of things. The second house tends to be where we make our money, the income that we have. It's our values, especially value of self. It is a full moon, and so we're really talking about potentially ending a source of income here, that this could relate directly to a job, where maybe you decide you want to end the job that you're doing. Maybe it's in a, um, a charity of some sort, maybe it's in a hospital setting, anywhere where a compassion is given out. And maybe you've been giving too much compassion or working too hard. Um, you know, I'm thinking compassion fatigue or burnout. Um, some Aquarius may feel that around this time. And the big spotlight is put on, well, how are you earning your money here? What value are you getting for what you're giving? And so there may be a bit of a tug there back and forth where you've got to rethink. Maybe something as simple as, am I getting enough money? for all the efforts that I'm being put in here, right? That type of thing. But there's some Aquarians that may just decide you don't want to do that job anymore. Um, and then there's still other Aquarians that may decide to retire. And this is kind of the linchpin around which you make that decision. Because these eclipses that will happen in Pisces, as well as the opposite sign Virgo, will highlight that second house that I just spoke about. But the Virgo eclipses will highlight your eighth house, right? Where you potentially decide to access um, your pensions, uh, your investments, that type of thing. It also could be just something as simple as, you know, a big spotlight is put on your value. Um, where, where you get some kind of epiphany saying, you know, I've got to be more compassionate with myself. I'm, I'm giving too much here. And you get this wake-up call uh, that causes you to rethink things here with regards to how you make your money. Now, it could also be a time where you make a very firm decision to budget your money, right? Um, I mean, it can also be, because it's Pisces and it rules, to some extent, charitable organizations, you could just end maybe giving money to a charitable organization that you no longer want to give, that maybe doesn't align with your values. Could be something as simple as that too. Take care of yourself, Aquarius. All right, everybody, that was just a short video for you just to, I guess, draw your attention to this uh, full moon eclipse in Pisces. As always, I'm always wishing everyone all the best. Please take care of yourself. Um, and we've got a whole new adventure ahead of us uh, starting officially, it starts uh, in mid-January 2025 with the North Nodes, transiting North Nodes, ingressing into Pisces. Um, but that this eclipse in Pisces kicks off the area of your life that will be highlighted uh, with regards to your destiny path in September 2024. Please reach out to me if you would like your chart done. Um, leave comments. I always love hearing from everybody. Sending everybody lots of love. Uh, please take care of yourself. I will talk to you soon.